Hello there. I am here to introduce to you a new course that we are going to run on NPTEL via the Slyome platform uh, that uh, uh, you will that will allow you to learn about this new revolutionizing technology uh, called blockchain technology. The course is titled Introduction to Blockchain Technology and Applications. So our emphasis is on the technology side of blockchain. What is the underlying technology of blockchain? What are the different types of blockchains that are uh, in use today? Uh, and uh, there, uh, after that, we would uh, go specifically to discuss the architecture of uh, different types of blockchain frameworks. So the first uh, very well-known application of blockchain technology was in Bitcoin. So in the beginning, we'll be discussing how the Bitcoin ecosystem works, what is the technology underneath the Bitcoin ecosystem, which includes uh, cryptography, uh, which includes hashing, and which includes uh, uh, something, a probabilistic uh, consensus mechanism uh, called uh, uh, mining. Uh, and we'll also talk about some of the uh, pitfalls of this kind of an ecosystem which requires such computationally expensive mining. And the reason why it is computationally expensive is because uh, existence of malicious uh, uh, agents uh, in the ecosystem could actually uh, hamper the data integrity. And in order to ensure that the data integrity is not compromised, uh, the computational cost is incurred. However, that requires a lot of uh, computational power and which translates to real energy. And today, the Bitcoin ecosystem requires uh, an amount of energy which is equivalent to uh, running the power system of uh, countries like uh, Ireland and uh, many other small, small countries. So the next thing that we would look into is uh, permission blockchain, which does not necessarily require a mining mechanism for data integrity. The basic idea behind any kind of uh, uh, system where we want to keep the data uh, safe and uh, maintain the integrity of the data and ensure that an outcome is uh, correct. Uh, there is this distribu distributed algorithmic notion of Byzantine fault tolerance. So we'll discuss how the Byzantine fault tolerance uh, comes into picture uh, and how they're implemented in various kinds of blockchain. So uh, in particular, in permission blockchain, uh, it plays a very direct role whereas in uh, crypto uh, currency systems they are indirectly implemented probabilistically through mining mechanism so we would like to uh, make you understand these differences and the places where uh, permission blockchain are useful such as uh, uh, you know land record registration medical uh, information uh, 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 and uh, uh, various kinds of uh, logging mechanism, uh, self-sovereign identity mechanism, and so on. Uh, many times you can have a choice between uh, permission and non-permission blockchain. Uh, and uh, hopefully, after doing this course, you will have a better idea when to choose what type of blockchain for your application. The other thing that we'd like you to understand at the end of this course is that blockchain is not necessarily a solution to all problems. So how to identify that your problem might be better solved with a blockchain technology and that requires you to think about what are the threat models, what are the ways you are uh, assuming that your data might not be safe and who are the actors 
from which you are trying to make your data safe and then accordingly uh, maybe blockchain is the solution uh, and uh, the probability of uh, being compromised uh, for the uh, uh, for in the in the, in the repository of information that you are trying to protect uh, will be uh, um, very very less if you use blockchain and then accordingly you can choose whether whether to go with a blockchain and what kind of blockchain you should go with and in order for you to get a uh, good feel of that we'll go through various kinds of blockchains uh, architecture technology use cases such as uh, uh, some of the uh, public blockchains like bitcoin ethereum uh, the iota and uh, uh, and some permission blockchains like hyperledger and uh, coda uh, so that after seeing so many different types of implementations and different uh, threat models uh, for which these things are being used uh, you can have a better understanding of the choices you have to make what you will not uh, get uh, after finishing this course, uh, because it's a very short course, eight weeks long course, is uh, you know too much programming details. Like you will not uh, become experts in writing smart contracts or uh, chain code for Hyperledger or uh, various kinds of uh, implementation. Uh, it is more for your basic under understanding of the. Uh, underlying platform, underlying uh, uh, technology, and the mechanisms through which uh, consensus is made. And also, as I said, most importantly, to understand when blockchain is useful for your problem and when uh, to use what kind of blockchain. So if you can uh, get that at the end of the course, that will be, that will consider that as an accomplishment. So we look forward to uh, your participation in the course and uh, I think we'll start some, sometime in uh, February, I think 24th of February and it will run until 17th of April, so it's eight week long and we hope that uh, you will be uh, uh, enriched by taking this course. Uh, thank you very much, I hope to see you uh, very soon, thank you.